There we go. Let's see what we got. This is the part I was nervous about. That looks really good. Like, really, really good. Wow. You guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is a bit of a different episode from what we traditionally do. Usually we're doing the vlogging, the traveling, doing different things with cars. Today, we're changing it up because my good friend Don recently got a C8 Corvette. And I thought something cool that we could do that I used to do would be to build him a carbon fiber hood. So in front of me, I have the hood off of my C8 Corvette. And I thought, you know, it might be cool if we could do this in carbon fiber for him. So there's definitely a few things that we got to look at here before we get into the carbon fiber aspect of things. First off, there's a few nicks. So if you know anything about carbon fiber or making a mold, because we need to make a mold before we do anything, is we're making a mirror image of what we have here. So essentially this has to be perfect before we can move on to the mold process. We have probably somewhere in the ballpark of 100 hours to make the mold. And then the actual infusion part only takes like maybe 30, 45 minutes. We could just skin this in carbon fiber and epoxy and call it a day, but it's not as cool, it's not as sentimental. Don's a good friend. Don is probably one of the most kind and genuine people I've ever met. I wanna do something cool for him. So I'm really hoping this turns out absolutely cherry. First, we're gonna prep it. We're gonna put a mold release agent on it, then the gel coat. And then we're gonna get some fiberglass matting and we're gonna put probably eight layers of fiberglass on this. Then we're going to, on the bottom side, rinse and repeat. And we're gonna do the same on the other side. That'll be part two of that video you guys are gonna to wanna to watch. It's a process, it's gonna be a journey, but you know what, Don deserves it. He is, like I say, one of the kindest and most genuine people I've ever met. And I wanna do something cool for him. So I think a carbon fiber hood on his new black C8 Corvette will be absolutely killer. Let's get rolling. got the plastic board all around it. It's all sealed off. I used hot milk glue or hot glue gun all around the edges. We even had a quick wet sand in 1500. So today's goal, uh, we're gonna put about six layers of wax on here, uh, mold release wax. And then we're actually gonna hit it with three layers of PVA mold release agent. So let that cure. And then I would like to still today get down the tooling gel coat so we can start laying the fiberglass mat on top of that. Busy day, big day, let's get lots done and uh, see how it turns out. Two days later. So this is number five. I haven't videoed them all because let's be honest, nobody wants to watch me do this over and over again. This is the wax coming off and then we're gonna put another layer of wax on. And then I'll end up hitting it with that PVA spray. And essentially what that is, is a really thin, thin film. Like we're talking thinner than tissue paper. And essentially what it does is puts a very thin barrier between your tooling gel coat and your part that you're working on. This takes time and the reason being is it has to dry or cure in between. So you put the wax on, you wait 40 minutes and then you wait and you wipe it off and put it on 40 minutes. But yeah, I'll get the PVA on here and bring you guys back after. Okay guys, as you can see, we got the uh, tooling gel coat down. It's at a point where now where it's nice and tacky. You don't want it to cure fully, but you don't want it to be too tacky. Now we're gonna put down the carbon mat. I'm looking right now, because I see some areas where we run into potential issues. And what happens is the stuff when it cures generates a lot of heat that pulls the paint from underneath. So we are definitely gonna have some repairs to do. We're going to put the mat down. We're gonna make sure it's on there good. We're gonna roll it out nice and even. We're gonna let, let it get to a point where it's relatively cure and then we're gonna put another mat down, I'm oh, sorry, another cloth down, and then we're gonna put a couple layers of mat on it. And when we're done, it should be about a quarter inch thick. And then we're gonna do the bottom part, which is actually the hard part compared to the top half. So let's look forward to that. Okay guys, so Dawn's hood is coming along great. Well, it's not even the hood, it's just the mold. A lot of people ask me all the time, like, oh, do you need lots of resin? The resin only holds it a little bit. And I often use the analogy, it's similar to concrete and rebar. Re concrete by itself with no rebar, although hard, has no structural integrity. And it's the exact same with this. If you have just the resin, don't get me wrong, it's hard, but there's no structural integrity. You can break it in your hand, right? So I do have the mat to go down next. We're gonna do two layers of mat, and then we should be good. We'll flip this baby over, and then we'll start working on the complicated end of things, and that's the underside. Okay, guys, so it's the next day. It's another morning. 
we are going to try and flip this thing over. Oh boy, oh, I said 30 pounds heavier? Oh, that was an exaggeration. 50 pounds heavier. Holy smokes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow, I was not expecting that. Ugh. The hood went from 10 pounds to 80 pounds. Holy smokes. This is what I was talking about when I said that the inside is going to be much more difficult. Let's start by taking off the um, mesh we put all the way around it here. And the reason we're taking this off is this flange that we built around here is going to be the flange for the lower or the underside because essentially we're building it. It's going to be two pieces and then we'll use body panel adhesive to put it together. We'll basically sandwich the hood in between the two pieces and then release it. Okay, so here's what we built so far. We've got the flange here. You can see the hot melt glue that we put on there. Now we need to build this structure or skeleton here. What we got to take into consideration is we do have bolt holes here. So we're going to want to seal these and then afterward, we're going to put a nut cert in there. Again, same thing over here. And these, keep in mind, this is structural part of the hood, right? So we're going to want to make sure that's solid. I did realize though, after I finished putting the gel coat on the other day, I was in the house and it hit me that I made a mistake. I put bolts in the uh, holes for the hinges and that's not going to work because once we put the fiberglass top on here, you have no way to get those bolts out. You're screwed. So before we do anything today, I'm going to cut away with a knife the gel coat on the bolts on the hinges and I'm going to unscrew them. And as you guys are probably wondering is how am I going to get the fiberglass to bond to this? And I work with an unwaxed resin or unwaxed gel coat. I work with both. The goal today will be, we're going to get those bolts out. We're going to put some clay or something in there to mark where those holes are. So we can actually get this off after. I'm glad I caught it now. And we don't want to have any air gaps. So we're going to put those little pieces in everywhere so that this tooling gel coat has something to bond or bite to. And then from there, then we can put the bigger pieces down. So it's definitely a lot of work. We probably got a solid eight to 10 hours of mat laying. It's a good back workout. You can feel it in your lower back when you're done. And then once it cures, we're gonna take the jigsaw and go around. Anyway, so we've got the light cloth on all of the tight corners with the exception of the hinges. We're gonna come back to that. Um, from there, we're gonna end up putting on a much heavier cloth. I like doing the cloth first, because like I said, if you have any air bubbles, there's no structural integrity to the gel coat itself. And as soon as you pull it off, the gel coat's either left behind or you'll wipe it off, it'll break and chip. You don't want that. So you can't have any air bubbles left behind. So we're gonna end up using this heavier cloth. Um, we'll, we'll put it over top of these corners too. Uh, then we're gonna end up hitting it with this heavier mat. This is with the, the real rigidity and structural integrity of everything. These, these cloths are good. You can see how much thicker and denser that is than this. And uh, this is where all your rigidity comes from. And you want rigidity because otherwise you're screwed. So we're gonna end up putting a whole bunch of this down. I have a whole bunch of scrap pieces over there and we're just gonna kind of plaster it all over the place. That takes care of layer one of four. And we're gonna let this sit for a little while tack up pretty good and then we're going to come back and make sure there's no air pockets in it. We're going to be using, we'll jump into Steve's bucket of scraps here. We're going to be using the standard fiberglass mat, nothing too crazy. Um, like I say, this is a lot more rigid than the cloth we were using before. So this is going to give us our stiffness that we're looking for because if it's too floppy, it's not going to work good. So as you can see, we're just going around trimming right now. Actually really cool. You can see just from trimming, it's starting to separate, which is a really good sign that the release agent is doing its job. So that's cool. Um, just kind of in this area, but we've only gone up to here and then the battery died on the jigsaw. So things are going good though. I still have concerns about a mechanical lock in certain areas. 
but we'll see how it comes apart when the time comes. All right, guys, we're getting ready for the big moment of truth here. And uh, we'll see how this turned out here. Actually, that looks really good. I'm super happy with that. I'll show you guys here. So this is the top part of the hood, the visual part that you'd see walking up to the car. A little bit of uh, clear coat wrinkling here. We can repair that. We're gonna end up sanding this flange area down where we're gonna put our gum tape. Actually, now that I see there's a whole bunch of imperfections lower down here. Lower down here, we'll have to fix all this. The bottom part of the hood is what I'm actually most scared about because of all the different curves and everything in it. Holding it on the front here. There we go. Let's see what we got. This is the part I was nervous about. That looks really good. Like, really, really good, wow. So here's the bottom half. This will be future latch assembly. These will be the adjusting screws, the hood latches over there. This piece will be cut out. And um, somehow, and I'm not sure how, the bottom, like my glove, the bottom turned out better than the top. I'm not sure how that happened. We're gonna repair up here where I talked about the hood lifting. It actually didn't lift as much as I thought and I put all this gel in there, maybe we didn't need that. So I'm gonna mix up some uh, tooling gel coat and then we'll just fill in these high spots here. So we, what we have here is just some uh, wax and grease remover essentially. And we wanna make sure these surfaces are nice and clean for the gel coat. Now this is an unwaxed gel coat, so we can apply the gel coat to this gel coat even though it's a week old and it should bond perfectly fine. Now, if you're doing this and you don't have any of this wax and grease remover I just used, you could buy it at any body shop. Apparently it lasts forever because I've had this stuff forever. We got to make sure this is absolutely perfect or it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. It'll be the first thing you see walking up to the car. We don't want Don's car having an eyesore on it. Okay, so I've mixed this catalyst a little bit on the strong side just because I want it to cure sooner than later. I'm just gonna put it on here, let it settle into the low spots, and then we'll come back with a straight edge and uh, level it off. Today we're gonna start with, I'm gonna clean up this edge a little bit here on this flange, and then we're gonna move into cleaning up the flange and sanding it and filling the low spots. What we want is we want a nice smooth surface when we're done because we want the gum tape to have a good bite to something so we don't have any vacuum leaks. If we put this under vacuum and we have vacuum leaks, it just sucks air in and it creates a bigger mess than what we have now. And we'll clean up that flange as well. But this one we'll just tidy up a little bit with a jigsaw and then uh, get cruising. So uh, let's do it. So what I did in that time lapse you just watched was essentially all the gel coat we had put on there previously or prior, I sanded down with BD grit, but then there was still a few spots I wasn't happy with, so I mixed up some more tooling gel coat, and from there, I filled more of the low spots I wasn't too happy with, and then I just kind of went around the perimeter of the flange again. Not for any particular reason, there was a couple pinholes, and like I say, one pinhole in the vacuum bag will ruin your entire part, so you want to make sure it's as sealed as possible. So, uh, I guess with that said, we'll get going here. Okay guys, I want to kind of show you what we're doing here. So I was just sanding this. This was uh, 180 I was doing the whole thing in. And the reason I'm doing that is to clean some of this dust away. And you look here, you see how smooth and consistent this is? This is where I've hit it with 180. This is where I went over it one time. And now you see the light spots and the dark spots, that's high and low spots. So if we were to go ahead and just use this hood as is, we would end up with something really wavy and we don't want that. So I'm doing the whole thing in 180 and I'm gonna hit it in 320, then probably a 400. And then I'm gonna to jump to a six and eight and then I'm gonna start doing a 12 in a wet sand and then probably a 1500 in a wet sand. And then we're gonna put wax down, high temperature mold release wax. Then we're gonna put some PVA on top of that. And then we're gonna start actually using this thing. We're gonna use 
Uh, we'll go from there and we will use a spray-on gel coat. We'll let that cure. And then from there, we will end up using our epoxy and we'll do a full infusion on this. So you can see how it all turned out. It's nice and smooth and shiny. I finished it in 1500 grit and then gave it a quick polish. But overall, I think it's gonna work really good. A few minor imperfections and defects, but I think we'll work around them once the uh, actual part is done. We're gonna get that to that in the next video. Do you guys enjoy this vlog? Definitely let me know. We can make more of these.